Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Jakarta. My name is Signal Emity. I'm the commercial counselor of the Austrian Embassy commercial section in Jakarta at Vantage Austria office. And uh, beside me, we have Ms. Nina Sutrisno. She's the team leader of the uh, foreign partnership of the Halal Product Assurance Organization body, BPJPH, of the Ministry of Religious Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. Uh, today, we will hold the webinar Halal Certification for Indonesia. I would like to start our webinar by uh, informing you that this webinar is being recorded. Uh, you can uh, find the recording uh, after the webinar uh, at uh, our YouTube channel. And uh, after our presentation, there will be a questions and answers part where you can uh, Answer, or where you can ask uh, questions concerning halal certification in Indonesia. I would now like to start by giving you a brief introduction into Indonesia. The Republic of Indonesia is a very large country in Southeast Asia. It has a population of 270 million inhabitants. Uh, it's the fourth most populous country in the world. And 56.7% uh, of the population live in cities. Uh, only on the island of Java, which is the island in the south, uh, you can read it there, uh, over 150 million people live. It is also a very big country. It has, a, it has an area of 1.9 million square kilometers. That's almost 23 times as large as Austria. And uh, these 1.9 million square kilometers are divided onto 17,500 islands. Not all islands are inhabited, of course, but many are. So uh, Indonesia has, of course, uh, a different geography than Europe. There are challenges in infrastructure, in logistics. The country is uh, the largest economy in Southeast Asia. It is part of the G20. Uh, it has an annual growth of about 5%. And amongst others, it is a member of the ASEAN and the RCEP. Uh, below, you see the flag of the Republic of Indonesia and the coat of arms of Indonesia. Now, having said that, uh, not only is Indonesia a very large country, it has a lot of large cities and uh, a large urban population. Uh, 38 provinces in total, nine with a special status. The largest city is Jakarta, in which we are sitting now. Uh, here you see a picture which I took uh, in uh, maybe a little bit more uh, quiet times. Uh, you can see the blue skies of Jakarta. Not very often it is such, but uh, what you do see is the skyline. Uh, it is a city with 33 million inhabitants, uh, Greater Jakarta, which makes it number two in the world. But besides Jakarta, we have other large urban centers in Indonesia. Uh, the largest ones are Bandung in West Java, 7 million, Surabaya, 6.5 million in East Java, Medan is the largest city in Sumatra with uh, 3.6 million, Semarang is the city in Central Java with 2 million, Makassar is the largest city on the island of Sulawesi, also known as Celebes, with 1.95 million inhabitants, Palembang, a large city in Sumatra, 1.9 million, and Yogyakarta, uh, the cultural capital of Java in central Java with 1.6 million inhabitants. Uh, in total, there are 14 metropolitan areas in Indonesia with over 1 million inhabitants. Eight of them are, the, are, are on the island of Java. Having said uh, this about geography, I would like to come to the topic of uh, today's webinar which is the halal market. And uh, for that, I would like to say a few words about halal and Islam in Indonesia. Indonesia has uh, the largest Islamic population in the world. In total, around 241.7 million uh, Indonesians are of Islamic faith, which is about 87% of the population. Uh, not only uh, is it the largest Muslim population worldwide, uh, it also has larger populations of uh, people of Islamic faith than, for instance, Pakistan, India, or Bangladesh. So uh, halal, 
uh, halal certification, halal products are important for the Indonesian consumer. And uh, as such, Indonesia is the world's largest halal food and beverage market. And uh, we therefore uh, have the honor to have uh, Mrs. Nina Citrisno with us today. Uh, Nina Citrisno is uh, our team leader uh, for foreign partnership at BPJPH. Uh, I've already introduced Nina. And uh, her work areas cover the assessment of halal certification bodies abroad and taking care of MOUs, so memorandums of understanding with different countries, uh, and MRA, mutual recognition uh, agreements, uh, and all further partnerships. Uh, Nina, uh, thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, we are very eager to learn more about the halal market in Indonesia and mm -hmm. halal certification in Indonesia. And I would like to pass uh, the presentation on to you. And thank you very much, Nina. I will leave the floor to you. Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning from Jakarta. Uh, the Honorable Mr. Sigmund Namati, thank you very much for the opportunity of speaking. And this is a very quite important because everyone here in Indonesia and also uh, most of the college all over the world are waiting for October 2024. What will happen? Well, in October 2024, Indonesia will have halal mandatory. And now today we are going to talk and discuss about it. I will uh, give uh, you a little bit explanation about halal in Indonesia and hopefully we have a time to have a further discussion. So uh, before we go on to the main point, uh, let me introduce about a little bit of assignment that I've done in BBJPH. I've got the assessor team in Montreal, Canada on August and then on September, I am the Indonesian delegation on Global Halal Summit Malaysia, uh, also the assessor team in Shandong and Xianmen, China. And uh, I also coordinator of international conference for the MOU signing, MRA signing for the 37 halal certification bodies in H20 event of Indonesia under uh, the Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs of Indonesia. And I am also the speaker on technical cooperation, the workshop on regulation and regime on uh, exportation seafood in Norway. And then I also be the consultant of Fuzo HCB preparation in China. Also the speaker on company briefing for entering Indonesia halal food market in Seoul, South Korea. Then uh, at the beginning of 2024, I, uh, I was the, the Indonesian delegation on Makkah Halal Forum and the speaker on foreign halal assessment with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Indonesia. And uh, just yesterday, I was the chairperson in 17 IMT GT strategic planning working group on halal product and services. So it means that halal is around me. Next is, <clears throat> if we all talking Indonesia and we are talking about the halal, it refers to the Muslim in Indonesia. Indonesia, it is not a Muslim, uh, it is not a Muslim country, but Indonesia is the most Muslim populated country for Muslim, halal status of a consumed good or part of worship, consumed non-halal product are considered as a sin, so that halal certification by the state is a must in order to guarantee person freedom of worship. And uh, in eight, seven, six million in total, almost half of Muslim population are live in uh, these five countries. And if you can see in the slide that Indonesia is in the first rank. The state is not based on a religious law. Yes, it is, but still have obligation to protect 
or person. The state shall be based upon the belief in the one and only God, and the state guarantees a person the freedom of worship, each according to his or her own religion or belief. It is stated in our 1945 Constitution in Article 29. Then, if we are talking about halal, now halal is not a kind of the exclusive. It is inclusive, not exclusive anymore. Halal does not mean that it is only for Muslim, but it is for non-Muslim too. Many halal product business owners are not Muslim. Just like, uh, actually in this slide, we uh, I, I put the video, but since we have to working with the, we have to work with PDF, uh, maybe later, you can uh, got the video from the record. Uh, this is the example of the half and b business, food and beverage business owners, such as cafe and restaurant. In order to acquire halal certificate, it is not a must for them to hire Muslim employees, but they only have to hire one of their halal quality assurance who are Muslim. So halal is not only dominated by Muslim and Islam, but this is for all. Another example that I found online is Halal Cafe in London. We know that London is uh, the minority country for Muslim, uh, the country with Muslim as the minority, but there we can find easily now, these days, the Halal uh, Cafe or Halal Resto that offer a lot of uh, menu and they claim that it is Halal. As we can see here, the Halal Cafe in London, the Dreamies Halal Cafe in London for your food list. This is their uh, tagline. The most aesthetic setting and a fully Halal Arabic inspired menu, which is so delicious. Uh, they also give us the menu. And it is also stated there that we had a fun time visiting in a brunch in Marble Arc. Uh, it's close to the Mobile Arc Underground, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And so we can find this. Uh, actually, I find it in the reel of the Instagram. And this day, it's easier for us to find such kind of the advertis uh, advertisement um, promoting the halal for the cafe, uh, for restaurant, and also for uh, food and beverage business. This is another example. And then, okay. In this slide, <clears throat> in Indonesia, halal is changing from voluntary to mandatory. We can highlight uh, some of the regulation there. Based on the law 33 to 2014 about the Halal Product Assurance or JPH, Jaminan Produk Halal, the government regulation number 39, 2021 about the GPH organizing. And this is also Mora, Minister of Religious Affairs Regulation and the session and uh, head of the BPJPH, Badan Penyelenggara Jaminan Produk Halal Regulation and the session. And it come to the Halal certification mandatory. Uh, based on the law number six, 2023, about the job creation, it is stated that products which enter, circulated, and traded in Indonesia region are halal certified mandatory. It is stated in Article 4, law number 33, 2014. And based on that one, we have the halal certification mandatory timeline. Halal is mandatory, but not all of the aspects should be uh, start in the same period of the time. So we have a timeline here. You can see in slide that in 2024, especially will be started on October 17, the mandatory will be for food and beverages, slaughtering services and product, and also the raw addition and auxiliary materials for food and beverage. 
then in 2026, we will come to the traditional medicine and supplement, cosmetic, chemical product, and genetic engineering. And also uh, the halal mandatory for used goods like clothes and accessories, household prayer and office equipment, and also the medical equipment in category A. Then in 2029, we will come to the free and free limited medicine, medical equipment in category B. And then in 2034, it will be for the hard drug except uh, psychotropic and also the medical equipment for category C. Come to the next slide is about the halal certification in Indonesia transformation. Actually, before from voluntary to mandatory, actually it is come uh, the very first time it come from the health issue. In 1976, Indonesian Minister of Health issued regulation for labeling non-halal product or product containing pork. And then in 18, uh, sorry, 1988, the case of lard in several products had spread and become of big concern to public. So in 1989, it establishment of LPPOM MUI as a halal certifying organization. Come to 2014, it is implementation of law number 33, 2014 on halal product assurance. And 2017 come to the establishment of BBJPH to enhance halal product assurance. And 2021 up to 2039 is halal mandatory stages. And if we take a look on the right side of this slide, uh, for the first part is about the halal certification transform from voluntary to mandatory. And then the second is about the civil society initiative to government authority. And then BPJPH becomes the sole authority for issuing a halal certificate. So if uh, we have the MOE for the previous uh, body to uh, issuing the halal certificate, now BPJPH under the Ministry of Religious Affairs of Indonesia is the only body who have the authority. And then BPJPH is the key government agency in halal assurance for product that enter circulate and are traded in Indonesia territory. Come for uh, the last phase is the government guarantees and facilitate the availability of halal products and services in the context of halal conscious consumer protection. If we are talking about the halal, one of my colleagues said that, uh, Nina, you uh, do not eat pork. Yeah. So you can eat a beef or a lamb or a chicken. Yeah. But not directly. But the way of slaughtering those meat is also be the matter. So uh, we come to the halal, not only the ingredients, but also the process and the characteristic. For Muslim, Halal is not just the ingredient that allowed to be consumed, but also the process of the product upstream, downstream, and the characteristic of the product when it applied to the body. For instance, a meat or slaughterhouse product, even it is not from the forbidden animal like pork, for example, not immediately can be accepted as halal. The slaughterhouse of halal animal need to be separated with non-halal animals and the slaughter need to be a Muslim and have to fulfill Sharia term when slaughter the animal. And uh, for your information, in Indonesia, in the in, uh, cosmetic industry in Indonesia, we have a term of water permeability. What is a water permeability? It is an important factor in cosmetic and personal care product in Indonesia market. Uh, high temperature and humidity are common in Indonesia. It's related to the culture, uh, cultural and religious practice of wudu uh, or ablation, the ritual cleansing before prayer or before salah in Islam. And Muslim consumers need to ensure that water reaches the skin beneath any cosmetic product. 
product with good water permeability allow water to penetrate and cleanse the skin effectively fulfilling the requirement of wudu so here in indonesia we have some uh, cosmetic industry who already got the halal certification with the one of the requirement is uh, water permeability for all of its product next go on to the next slide is about halal certification mandatory stages this is a kind of the highlight uh, for the previous slide that uh, i have already explained before uh, started from October 2019 up to October 2034. We can see the first phase is in October 2024. We will go to the food, beverage, slaughtering products, and also the services. Oh yeah, hello, it's not only about the product, it's also about the services. So not only the product, but also the, the services. And traditional medicine, quasi drug and health supplement come will come next free medicine otc drug and limited free medicine prescription drug then the next step will come well, with a cosmetic chemical product genetic modification product and then use good category for clothing head covering uh -huh, something that i wear and, and also the accessories and then use good uh, category household health supplies uh, household equipment muslim worship equipment stationery and also uh, office supplies and use good for uh, medical devices risk a risk b and risk c this is the timeline for the halal certification mandatory stages Next is about halal product assurance uh, system criteria, or uh, in Indonesia, we call it SJPH, uh, System Jaminan Produk Halal. The first, it is about the commitment and the responsibility, written commitment to develop and maintain the criteria, halal policy, halal management team, Muslim halal supervisor, HRD related to halal policy. And then the second is about the materials. It cover raw materials, additive, processing aid, packaging, grease, sanitizer, and cleansing agent. And then for the third about the halal product process, location, facility, and equipment or tool must be hygiene and spirit from non-halal process. And starting from processing, storing, packaging, distributing, selling, and displaying. Those are the services that I have already mentioned before that halal is not only the product, but also the services. And again, it cover the processing, uh, storing, packing, or packaging, distributing, selling, and displaying. And then we go to the product. Uh, product and packaging meet halal requirements, traceable and easy to identify. And the last is about the monitoring and evaluation. It is about the internal audit, management review, product composition report per semester to uh, BPJPH. The next slide is about uh, halal clothes and fashion in Indonesia. We have a uh, yeah, be, besides food and beverage, halal also applied to clothes and fashion. And uh, we have the picture of uh, her name is Ibu Fitri Kuroda. Uh, she has the halal uh, fabric industry uh, and the brand is Kain Halal. We also have Soka here for halal sock, and Soka now will also do the halal certification for the leather for bag, for purse, and also for the belt. And then we also have the halal ihram. Uh, ihram is the special fabric for pilgrimage, umrah, or hajj. That's used for uh, where by the Muslim when we do uh, umrah or hajj. OK. The next slide is about halal uh, are not mandatory for those which are not halal. Uh, based on the government regulation number 39 of 2021, halal mandatory, it doesn't mean that everything should be halal. 
it means that the halal should be halal certified and the non halal should be put the label of non halal to uh, to make it easier for all of the consumer in indonesia to differentiate uh, within the halal product and the non halal product business owners still can trade with indonesia if the product aren't contain a halal ingredient but there are terms and conditions based on the government regulation the first based on the article 92 Business actor that manufacture product made from forbidden material are required to include non-halal information. So you can still uh, do the trade uh, about uh, for non-halal product, but you have to put non-halal information on the packaging. Non-halal information, as referred to the first paragraph, can take the form of image, sign, or writing found on product packaging particular part of the product and specific position of the product. You can put the pig, uh, the picture of a pig, a uh, pork, and also you can write on uh, how many percent of alcohol, or you can uh, put the sign contain pork. Or you can also only put the non-halal to the packaging. In Article 93, product containing forbidden material must include non-halal information in the form of image, writing, and all material names in a different color or on the materials composition. It's to make it easy to highlight. And uh, it is also in accordance with the norm of law and regulation, the inclusion of non-halal material as referred to in Article 92 and 93, it must be easy to see and easy to read as well as difficult to erase, difficult to remove, and difficult to destroy. Next, we, uh, we go to the administrative sanction based on the Article 149, Government Regulation Number 39, 2021. Violation to the regulation are not subject to criminal sanction, but administrative sanction. The sanction against business sector include the following form. The first is written warning. The second is administrative uh, fine, and then go to the halal certificate re revocation and withdrawal of good from circulation. The next uh, here is about the halal uh, product export realization. We have a lot of data here. I think it's not necessary for me to read. Yeah, means that a uh, halal product export realization is, uh, yeah, in the next slide we can find, yep. This is about the imported uh, halal, uh, share of the imported halal product by countries that have been registered in uh, BBGPH. Those are the countries, China 47%, and we have the Singapore, Malaysia, India, South Korea, and so on and so far. The next slide will be, oh yeah, this is uh, actually also uh, the video, but uh, this is about the halal wagyu in Japan. The first, I give you the example of uh, halal cafe in London. And now it's about the halal wagyu in Japan. So in Japan, also they are not Muslim. Uh, now uh, we can, it's easier for us to find the halal restaurant. And this is the halal guys in the in New York. The name of the the name of the uh, restaurant is halal guy. This is about the incredible journey that began in 1990 with our three Egyptian founders and blah, 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 blah. You can find it. So many uh, advertisement of the halal food and beverage. Now, here we go on the ways in case you want to export your halal product to Indonesia. uh from company we have two scheme the first you can do the halal certification to the halal certification body or hcb in your country or you can go uh, uh you can do uh directly to indonesia 
and uh, those are the chart from the companies to HCB you have the halal certification process and then uh, next application for accreditation and then uh, give Indonesia halal label after the last is issuing halal certificate you can take a look on those scheme and uh, we can continue if, if you have a question about the procedures of these procedures uh, we can have it in our discussion session. BBJPH only accept product registration that has been halal certified issued by recognized halal certification bodies. So, HCB in your country should be assessed first by uh, BBJPH of Indonesia, and then we do the MRA signing mutual recognition agreement that uh, every client of the HCB also be accepted by uh, Indonesia. We uh, have the slide here that explain the difference between uh, BPJPH and HCB. Uh, BPJPH company adopt and employs Indonesian Halal Assurance System criteria or SJPH and then apply to BPJPH via C Halal. The C Halal is our online platform by representative or importer. And then the audit conducted by Indonesian Halal Inspection Agency and then surveillance uh, conducted by BBGPI inspection team. Then the last is the validity period of the halal certificate will remain valid as long as there is no change in the composition of the ingredient or the product processes. If there is a change, so the halal certificate must be renewed. So if you are, to, uh, if you are asking about the validation period of your product of your halal certification product if you certified it in indonesia it lasts forever unless you change your uh, procedures of produ producing the product or you change uh, the ingredient of the product while for the halal certification body its company uh, the company adopt and employ indonesian halal assurance system criteria and also, and also apply to its cb recognized by bbgph in the country where where the company or business reside and then audit and surveillance conducted by a uh, halal certification body halal certificate uh, valid between up uh, one up to four years uh, or as per agreement between the halal certification body and the company or the business. And then the company needs to register its halal certificate to BBGPH to access Indonesian market. Uh, it is a uh, little bit information about the Halal 20 network or H20. We have a mutual recognition agreement or MRA and BBGPH effort in international trade. <laughs> in order to maintain diplomatic ties and international trade between Indonesia and the world, BBGPH also give an effort to optimize export import activities with mutual recognition agreement or MRA in halal sector in Indonesia and other countries can do a trade of halal product easily and responsibly. There are 140 halal certification bodies uh, applied for accreditation, and we have already uh, got the MRA signing for 37 halal certification bodies. And for your information, halal certification body in Austria, we have two uh, HCB there, and now is uh, in the process of assessing. The first is Islamic Information Document and Certification, uh, IIDC, and also the Halal Quality Control Austria. Okay, now we go to the label, the label of the Indonesian Halal Label. Uh, we can see that this is the uh, type, some types of the Halal logo from Indonesia. The halal label consists of logo and halal uh, certificate number, halal label colors, purple, black, and white. The halal label has border and is used on product packaging. The halal labels 
background color matches uh, the color or pattern of the packaging. And the halal label format can be downloaded in the See Halal app on the Business Echoes account. And then certification menu, download the main halal label, and then download the secondary halal label. So uh, there are some halal labels for foreign halal certificates on halal products. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the last section of uh, my explanation. If you have a question, not now, <laughs> you can uh, call our call center for layanan sertifikasi halal. Yeah, I think that's all. If you uh, have a question, uh, for the question, time is yours. Thank you, Pa Sigmund. Thank you very much, Ibu Nina Sutrisna. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very informative presentation about halal certification in Indonesia. Um, now we would like to uh, move on to the questions and answers session. Uh, we have uh, now time to ask Ibu Nina uh, about uh, different aspects of halal certification in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already have uh, quite a few questions which have been asked. And uh, I would like to start with uh, the first question which, uh, uh, which uh, has been asked. Um, uh, the question is, um, what if I have an old halal certification from MUI? Is it still valid? Ibunina, how is that? Yeah. Uh... We give the relaxation or, uh, or the easiness for the business account that you have already got the MUI, uh, MUI mm -hmm. certificate. Uh, you can still use that up to uh, 2026, but after that, you have to change into the Halal logo of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. 2026. Mm -hmm. Understand. Um, the next question, which uh, has been asked, is. Uh, uh, concerning food supplements, uh, do food supplements need to be halal certified, and and starting from when? Yeah, it should be, and uh, based on the timeline that uh, we have already explained that uh, it will be start on twenty twenty six. Twenty twenty six. So okay, I see. Um, another question which uh, we received is um, it uh, it concerns APEC, uh, the region, A Asia Pacific. Uh, is there already a mutual recognition agreement with uh, other APEC countries? And uh, are those halal certificates of these countries where there is an MRA recognized in Indonesia? What, what, is, the, what is the situation here? Okay, uh, we have Australia. We have uh, MRA with eight halal certificates and body there. Uh, we have Canada two certification body there. We have already made the MRA with mm -hmm. Canada. Mm -hmm. And then Chile, we have one halal certification body and Malaysia. Malaysia now, uh, we are in the process of assessment with Jakim, Malaysia. And then for uh, New Zealand, we have already got the MRA signing for three HCB in New Zealand. And then for... Uh, Singapore, we have already got the uh, assessment, and now is the process of uh, having MOU signing. Mm -hmm. And then with the Thailand, we have one. In, in America, we have five uh, already MRA signing with the five HCB there in America. And in Japan, we have two MRA signing with two CB there. And South Korea, we have three. Uh, MRA signing with uh, the HCB in South Korea. So uh, for the list of the country that uh, I do not mention means that we still have no any MRA uh, signing with those countries. I see. And uh, for the countries where there is an MRA signed, uh, those halal certificates are recognized by Indonesia. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I have a, a question to a very special product, uh, Ibonina. Yeah. Uh, one uh, company would like to know if uh, a halal certification is needed for baby feeding bottles. How is that? Okay, so it, it will be categorized as the uh, 
goods, okay, uh, as a goods or a used goods. Uh, the principle is all of the product that contain or made a, from the animal, mm -hmm. it should be halal certified. Okay. But uh, just try to take a look on the uh, baby bottle. If there is no any uh, animal uh, origin, yeah, uh -huh, mm -hmm. for the material, so it is not necessary to be halal certified. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, ah, the questions are pouring in. Uh, the next question uh, is uh, concerns. Uh, uh, you have mentioned that uh, one quality assurance employee needs to be Muslim. Can you please explain a little further how that is uh, understood? Yeah, yeah. Once we certify the uh, of uh, company or uh, factory, we need uh, one of the requirement is uh, they have the see this one they have to have the halal quality uh, assurance. Mm -hmm. uh, it is okay for only have one. And their duty is to make sure that all of the process of the production mm -hmm. is in halal uh, procedures. So that's why uh, the most requirement for the halal quality assurance employee, they should be Muslim. Mm -hmm. But if they can work in a, anywhere uh, as long as you claim that this is halal and it will be proved uh, by. Uh, the super under the supervision of the halal quality assurance. And and does does this employee need to be an Islamic scholar? Uh, no. 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 Okay. But they have to understand, really understand mm -hmm. about the process of the producing mm -hmm. of the product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Vanina. Mm -hmm. Um, a question which, of course. Uh, is very interesting for our companies in Europe. Which halal certification bodies are already recognized in Europe? Europe, uh, for all of the halal certification body in Europe, we will start in the first part of assessment in this 2024. So uh, there is no any halal certification body yet uh, that recognized by BBGPH because we will uh, start to do the assessment first. So hopefully in June, uh, because we will have the mandatory in October, uh, in June, uh, hopefully we will have the result of all of the assessment for the halal certification body in Europe. Uh, another question which comes up in this connection is, uh, since, as you said, at the moment there are no halal certification bodies recognized yet, what can a company do at the moment? Uh, you can directly uh, register to certify your product mm -hmm. uh, directly to BBJPH Indonesia. Directly to BBJPH mm -hmm. Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, you know that uh, EU is a common market, so of course uh, uh, companies are, are interested in knowing uh, if a halal certification body is not uh, available in one country, can they go to another EU country to have it certified there? Uh -huh. It seems that this is a thousand times question <laughs> that I have to thousand times answer. So uh, based on the Indonesian regulation, uh, we only have bilateral uh, partnership. So once uh, we recognize one country, we only recognize one country. So uh, we do not do the cross border. So that's why uh, we suggest that in, in every country, you have to have your own halal certification body. If it is not, you can still do your uh, registration of your, halal, uh, of your halal product to the BBGPH, direct to BBGPH Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, another question which, uh, which has come up is uh, concerning logistic services. Mm -hmm. uh, does that need to be halal certified? And how does that work and when should that mm -hmm. be? If we are talking about the halal logistic, it's a very long process because uh, halal logistic 
it's a must also because uh, mm -hmm. once we have a food uh, beverage and slaughtering as the first of our timeline for the halal mandatory, so all of the services concerning with that also be uh, the matter also. And halal logistics, we are working on it actually for the halal logistic and uh, we have a specific uh, regulation on every specific item and for the logistic we are we are still working on it mm -hmm. and uh, for the information that in issuing the halal uh, logistic regulation we have already have a lot of meeting with a lot of uh, logistic partnership and then uh, we are also learning uh, the way or the process of the logistic how it works and then once, uh, for example, once we have to certify the container, means that the container should be only for the halal product. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So okay. that, that is that is uh, one of the example of the halal logistic. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and uh, of course, um, when it comes to certification, uh, the question is always asked: What about the costs? How much does it cost uh, to certify halal a product? How, how, are there official fees? How does that work uh, from BPGPH? Oh, okay. Uh, the cost will be based on the number of the product that you register. And you can find all of this information when you click our portal C Halal. And for the cost of uh, FRCB in mm -hmm, every country, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe that it will be very variative and it will be different. I see. So, uh, it will be based on the, home, uh, the number of the product that you register for the halal certification. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we really have a great interest here. So thank you very much for all these very interesting questions. Um, now, one of the questions which came here is, uh, is the halal certification accepted or I assume uh, sufficient or does the Indonesian halal label also have to be on the packaging? Or, or is, is, is the certification itself uh, already sufficient? First, a certificate is the matter, and the second halal logo put in the packaging is also the matter. So if you certified your uh, product in mm -hmm. uh, your halal certification body in your country, mm -hmm. means that you have to put the halal logo from the CD mm -hmm. on your country, and also halal logo of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, one more question we have is about food packaging. This is a rather long question, so I will try to uh, to uh, to summarize it. Uh, basically, the, the the compounds which are used to make food packaging, mm -hmm. um, which are not yet consumer products when they are imported to Indonesia, uh, is it enough that the company which makes the food packaging in Indonesia is applying for the certificates, or does uh, the food packaging compounds need to be certified uh, before they come to Indonesia. So basically the raw materials for the food packaging. Okay. If you have uh, the raw material from other country, you have to make sure that uh, everything should uh, be halal certified already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But even though these products are actually not of uh, animal origin, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still needs to be Still halal needs. certified before they arrive in Indonesia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I have a question here, which uh, you might understand. Uh, uh, I, I don't know this abbreviation, but is the halal certification HIF, HIFIA recognized? HIFIA is in London. Uh, as I told you, that uh, we're still mm -hmm. working on all of the assessment first. So we still uh, no, uh, we still have no any procedures for the MRA signing. So we are still working on on the uh, assessment process for all of the CB in Europe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I'm not mistaken, if you is from London, we still uh, will do the assignment there. Okay. So it's still not recognized yet, but we are working on it. Uh, a related question is another halal label. I assume a halal label from mm -hmm. a different country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. accepted, or does the Indonesian halal labor have to, label have to be on the packaging when it's in Indonesia? Okay. Once if you register your product from Austria and the product is uh, produced in Austria, so we only recognize the Austria halal label. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when when you certify the product from 
out of Austria, uh, Austria from other country, for example. Mm -hmm. So Indonesia cannot accept it. As I told you, mm -hmm. uh, the principle for our partnership, uh, for foreign partnership, is only bi bilateral. Bilateral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, if I understand correctly, if if there is an MRA between, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, Austria mm -hmm. and Indonesia, then a, an Austrian halal label would be accepted in Indonesia, or does it still have to be the Indonesian halal symbol, which which is used here? Two. The first is your lo halal logo, yes. and the second is Indonesian halal logo. So they both have to be on. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. I see. Mm -hmm. um, um, oh, we yeah. have a lot of questions. A lot nice. of questions, really. Thank really. you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. We we really appreciate it. Uh, next question concerns office equipment. Uh, mm -hmm. Does office equipment need to be halal even though it's not made of animal origin? No, if it is not made from the animal origin, it is not necessary to be halal certified. Not necessary mm -hmm. for office equipment to be halal certified. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another question, which uh, which has to <laughs> do with uh, with uh, a uh, neighboring country. Uh -huh. uh, is there any halal certification body in Hungary in the process to be accepted by BPJPH? In the process of uh, scheduling of the assessment, and we will do the assessment in the first batch of 2024. That will be start on uh, February and March. February, March. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, um, those are most of the questions. Uh, there's one question I, I would just like to reiterate. Uh, you have already mentioned it, but just for uh, just just to basically uh, uh, remind again, mm -hmm. uh, a halal certification. How long is it valid when it is issued by BPJPH, and how long is it valid when it is issued by the body halal certification body elsewhere? Uh, issued by halal certification body in every country. I don't know. It will be based on every halal certification body in those countries. But okay. in BBJPH, it will be last forever unless you change the procedure of producing and or you change the ingredient. But if it is not, uh, the halal certification issued by BBJPH Indonesia will be forever. So in other words, uh, if nothing is changed, mm -hmm. uh, once is enough to certify. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, now a non-halal question. Uh, mm -hmm. You also you already mentioned it. Uh, products which are not halal uh, need to be labeled somehow. Is that label standardized? Or uh, I know you 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 showed us that there's the pork, there's mm -hmm. the uh, non-halal symbol, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, how is that? Is that standardized, or it's up to uh, up to the producer? Uh, up to, to up to the producer because uh, uh -huh. uh, up to now we still have no any uh, exact uh, standard mm -hmm. uh, label for the non-halal. As I have already explained, that you can put the non-halal, or mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. uh, use the uh, contain uh, how many percent of alcohol, or mm -hmm. you can put the picture of the pork or pig. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is no any uh, standard for the non-halal labeling. Okay. Another question concerning toys. Mm -hmm. um, is it mandatory to make halal certification for plastic toys, which can come in contact with food products? How is that? Mm -hmm. As long as there is no any uh, animal material, mm -hmm. it is not necessary to be halal certificated. So uh, maybe just getting back uh, when it comes to food packaging, which mm -hmm. is also oh, uh, there is a food in uh, well, in, in, the, in if, that if the toys are come in contact with food products, I, I would say uh, without actually knowing what sort of company this is, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we know those cereals which might have some toys in it, mm -hmm, for instance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In such a case, for instance, mm -hmm. how, how is that seen? Uh, we certify for the food, not for the toys. For the food, mm -hmm. not for the toys. So mm -hmm. the toys themselves don't need to have a yeah. certification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, uh, we have had, uh, I think, more questions in this webinar oh, okay. than we've had in many webinars, and uh, and that just shows how interesting the subject is for our Austrian companies which want to export uh, to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that sense, of course, uh, this interest uh, also uh, has one question which I would like to uh, ask you. If an Austrian company wants to reach BPJPH directly, um, is there a direct telephone number they can reach or whom could they talk to directly at BPJPH in, in Jakarta? Mm -hmm. For foreign partnership, you can, uh, yeah, maybe you can put uh, my mm -hmm. phone number or Riri's phone number. It's okay. Uh, okay. Instead of only having for the, uh, 
people. Call center. Yes. If it is hard for you to reach the call center of BBGPH, uh, you can put my phone number or mm -hmm. release phone number. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the call center would be the 146, is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. Would that be reachable from abroad? Uh, it should be, yes. Should mm -hmm. be reachable from abroad. Mm -hmm. So plus 62 and then 146? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see here a WhatsApp number. For those of you who don't know the green symbol, uh, WhatsApp is an important mean of communication here mm -hmm. in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So uh, possible to uh, send a WhatsApp uh, mm -hmm. message, plus 62811, mm -hmm. 8010 mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you from my own experience, WhatsApp is uh, a means where you get a response very quickly. Yes. Uh, another question. Um, are flavors which are containing alcohol as a solvent possible to be certified for Indonesian halal flavors? Uh, actually, for food and beverage, we have uh, the level of tolerance for the alcohol 0.5%. So if mm -hmm. it is less than 0.5%, it mm -hmm. can be halal certified. But if it is more than 0.5%, it cannot be uh, halal certified. It 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 will be included uh, mm -hmm. non halal. So uh, zero point five percent is mm -hmm. is the, the solvents. Limit. Yep. So the solvents under zero point five percent need no halal certification. Uh -huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, we have one more question coming in. Uh, my mm -hmm. colleague is already writing. Uh, it seems to be a longer question, so uh, it's like uh, you know uh, <laughs> the test of a dissertation. Yeah, a absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So for me, uh, <laughs> gosh, and I will be great with this. <laughs> well, we Thank really you. appreciate anyway, you, yeah, Lina, that yeah, that you yeah. are here and that you that you, you are willing are to awesome, super gorgeous. that you are yeah. willing to uh, to uh, to uh, answer all these <laughs> questions. Uh, let Let's just take this question as the last question. Okay. Um, so uh, the question is. What if we work with contract manufacturers in a foreign country? Mm -hmm. Does there have to be a partnership with the country of the production place and Indonesia, or is Austria enough when we, as importer, are placed in Austria? Yeah, you can choose. If you have a, uh, the factory in Indonesia, while well, the owner is Australia, uh, Austria, you can choose to do the halal certification, whether in Indonesia or in Austria. Mm -hmm. So it will be mm -hmm. up to you. It's okay to do the halal certification in uh, both countries. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Ivanina, I think uh, we have run out of time. And as you see, the interest is fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. With my pleasure. Thank you very much for your interest. Ivanina, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we <laughs> thank are you aware... for inviting also. Thank you so much. We are aware that uh, some questions have not been able to be answered. Uh, we will convey those questions to Ivanina mm -hmm. and uh, and would uh, send you back the uh, the answers from Ibunino from BPJPH. Uh, we would like to thank you very much for your attention uh, for you. this uh, very vibrant webinar, and uh, we wish you a uh, a great day in Europe, a great day in Jakarta. And yeah. terima kasih, Ibunino. Thank you very much. Have a nice terima day from Jakarta. Somebody. Yeah, have a nice day. Thank you.